The Eastern Telegraph Company was a forerunner of cable and wireless and one of the pioneer businesses leading to modern telecommunications. The company laid and operated telegraph submarine cables across the world, earning its founder the title of the Cable King. It's difficult to imagine just how great an impact the invention of the electric telegraph had on the world. Before its invention, communications took the form of the letter, which made for very, very, very slow communications. Modern telecommunications began with the invention of the electric telegraph, but inventions are only curious toys until somebody sees either a business or a military application. Without companies like the Eastern Telegraph Company, there would be no telephones, and no internet, so no social media, and no YouTube. Imagine, you wouldn't be able to watch your favorite YouTube channel, like this one. The man at the center of it all was Mr. John Pender, a Scottish cotton merchant based in Manchester, who had become interested in the new technology of electric telegraphy. He invested money into several telegraphic enterprises, the most significant being a project to run a telegraph cable from Ireland to Newfoundland. He became the first chairman of the Eastern Telegraph Company. His vice chair was William Montague Hay, the 10th Marquess of Tweeddale who would succeed Pender in 1896 on the latter's death. The Marquis himself was succeeded as chairman in the year 1900 by Sir John Wolfe Barry, a civil engineer whose most well-known legacy is Tower Bridge. His successor at the end of 1917, with the First World War burning Europe and communications more vital than ever before, was Sir John Denison Pender, the son of Sir John Pender by his second wife Emma. The Eastern Telegraph Company was an amalgamation of several smaller companies, many of which were established by Mr. John Pender himself. They were often created for the purpose of laying individual cables. In October 1869, the British Indian Extension Telegraph Company was formed with a capital of £460,000 to lay a cable from Madras to Penang and then on to Singapore. In December of the same year, Pender created the China Submarine Telegraph Company with a capital of £525,000 in order to extend the Singapore cable as far as Hong Kong. A month later, Pender established the British Australian Telegraph Company with a capital of £660,000 in order to connect Port Darwin, Australia, with Singapore via Java. He was a busy fellow, this John Pender. This was all very well, but until a cable from India to Great Britain was in place, all these electric communications had to travel overland, which was by no means reliable. Three companies laid just such a cable in 1870, and in 1872, the shareholders decided to draw the four companies together. These were the Falmouth, Gibraltar and Malta Telegraph Company, the Marseilles, Algiers and Malta Telegraph Company, the Anglo-Mediterranean Telegraph Company and the British Indian Submarine Telegraph Company. All of these came together as the Eastern Telegraph Company. It was registered on the 1st of June 1872. It owned 8,860 miles of submarine cable. That's a lot of cable and it owned or rented some 1,200 miles of landline, and it had 24 telegraph stations around the world. Its head office was 66 Old Broad Street in London, and it had a capital of £3,800,000 in £380,000 shares.
The next 30 years is a story of amalgamations and mergers, with John Pender, who was knighted in 1888, reorganizing his vast portfolio of over 30 companies, that's 30 companies, into a more efficient organization. And who can blame him with 30 companies? In 1873, Pender amalgamated three companies, the British Indian Extension Telegraph Company, the China Submarine Telegraph Company, and the British Australian Telegraph Company into the Eastern Extension Australasian and China Telegraph Company. But John Pender's gaze wasn't turned only towards the east. The South American continent beckoned. The Brazilian Submarine Telegraph Company and the Western and Brazilian Telegraph Company both formed in 1873, would become the imaginatively entitled Brazilian Submarine Telegraph Company, before changing its name again to the even more imaginatively entitled Western Telegraph Company, just in case there was some confusion. All of these companies, the Eastern Telegraph Company and the Eastern Extension Australasia and China Telegraph Company, together with the Western Telegraph Company, as well as yes, all of these other ones, were brought together to form the nucleus of the Eastern and Associated Telegraph Companies. By 1887, the Eastern Telegraph Company had grown to operate 64 stations and own 22,000 miles of cable, only 2,000 miles short of a full circumference of the Earth. And in 1902, the Eastern Telegraph Company moved to their new headquarters at Electra House, 84 Moorgate Street. This became known as London Station. This building is now the Moorgate campus of London Metropolitan University. By the turn of the century, submarine telegraphy had serious competition. Wireless telegraphy, developed by Marconi, could talk to ships at sea, whilst cable telegraphy couldn't, giving Marconi and his radio telegraph system an advantage. The parts played by wireless operators during the sinking of the steamships Republic and Titanic, as well as the capture of the infamous Dr. Crippen, went far in proving its usefulness in the minds of the general public. Wireless became cheaper and cheaper, as well as quicker, and the urge to send messages via Eastern, that is, using submarine cables, began to decline. Eventually, the Marconi Company, the Pacific Cable Board, and the Eastern and Associated Telegraph Companies combined to form what eventually became cable and wireless.